Yo, 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 what's going on? What's up? What's going down? What's happening? This is your boy, No C, back with another slapper for y'all, man. What is the five fingers? Say to the face! <laughs> what? Slap! The We Are Venom 345 car vlog slash YouTube channel where we focus primarily on this particular build of my 2015 Dodge Charger RT. 5.7 slash 345 but it ain't the average it ain't stock it's not what you want it's not what you think it's next level and that's what this uh this vlog is about but also about just enjoying cars all together so for those that are new to the channel make sure you browse first of all like comment share subscribe and turn on the notifications if you like what's going on we, we do a lot of things with you know features on at car meets and car shows and uh whether you drive a camaro mustang corvette uh everything in between uh mopar heavy obviously but you know cadillac ctsv ct5v uh, Black Wing, whatever you got, bring them out. Dodge Viper, ACR, bring them out, bring them out. JDM, I see y'all, I see y'all. GTR, bring it out, bring it out. All that, man. Supra, you know, the Mark IV, the Mark V, whatever you got, bring it out. That's what we do it on this channel, man. It's for car appreciation, car aficionados, but also those who are trying to get into the car scene, those who are trying to understand how to build a car. Uh, I don't know everything. Uh, I've never known everything, and, and the knowledge that I have now is basically, you know, from two things, trial and error, and uh, over the, you know, past several years and decades, um, and also just being blessed enough to know those who know more than me. Always try to surround yourself with people who know more than you. Always surround yourself with people who know more than you. If you're ever the smartest person in the room, leave the room, because you have nothing to gain there and a lot to lose so keep that in mind so i'm just here to impart what i know um and you know have you guys and gals along for the ride you know so you can see what i do how i build um and hopefully save you guys from some of the mistakes i made so your trial and error is more trial and less error right but uh make sure you follow the build across all platforms tiktok same we are venom 345 ig we are Venom 345. And of course, here you are, YouTube. We are Venom 345. So make sure you check out and like and follow those pages as well. But today, Birdman hand rub, we're going to get into, I know you guys see that box back there, but that's none ya, none ya business. None ya business, boy. Mind ya. <laughs> that's for a separate video. Um, and if you're paying attention for those that have been following the page if you're looking through my rear view, rear view uh mirror or i should say rear window you'll notice there's a little something different there there's a separate video coming for that as well we did a full-on rear end swap full-on rear end swap so it does not look the same back there anymore had to make the looks match the power but today's video is one that was that is definitely in high demand uh, i i get this question all the time at car meets at car shows i get it in the comments section i get it on ig i get it on TikTok. everybody wants to know how do you build a 5.7 hemi up to be faster than a scat pack and or depending on how far you want to push it how to be equal or faster than a Hellcat. Is it doable? It is absolutely doable. Don't let anybody tell you it's not doable. I'm doing it, literally, in real time. So don't let anybody tell you it's not doable. It is doable. And it's just, it's not enough content out there, um, content creators out there that are putting these kinds of builds out there. You know, shouts out to the Scat Packs. Got a lot of love for them. Uh, Mopar Social Club, VP of Mopar Social Club, Dallas. Shouts out to Prez Chris uh, at That Bag Scat. Make sure y'all follow him on IG. Make sure y'all follow Mopar Social Club underscore Dallas on IG as well so you can see our lineup. Uh, lots of scats. We got Hellcats. We got, you know, TRX. And I mean, that we have a lot of variety there. Uh, you know, check it out. Um, but I say all that to say I personally have a love for everybody's build, everybody's car. I don't care if you're on a GT slash SXT and, you know, moving up from there, we all came from something. I definitely came from the six banger and I actually have one still 
in the arsenal. Um, and, I, you know, for me, it's just all about never looking down on somebody. But for those that do have the higher trim models that like to look down on the 5.7, got a little bit of a surprise for you if you pull up on this one. So for those that, you know, do have the 5.7 and you feel neglected and you feel like there's not enough content out there to show you how to build it out, that's what this page is for. And uh, that's what this video is really going to get into. So without further ado, let's talk about some of the things that you can do. And then I'll show you my particular bill, like what I chose to do. Uh, so first of all, you got the the, the engine component of it, right? Uh, five sevens take boost much, much better than the 6.4 that's in the scat pack, than the 392. Uh, anybody who knows anything about cars, specifically Hemis, will tell you that the 392s do not like boost whatsoever. They're already more or less maxed out because of their compression ratio, uh, you know, how high the rain landing sits, et cetera, et cetera. It just it doesn't like boost. Now, can it be done? Yes, it can be done. But it's a much, much more riskier endeavor uh, than doing it with a 5.7. And plus, with a 5.7, you get much more power per uh, gain much more gain per mod or however you want to word it, much more power per mod than you would in the 6.4. Um, now, options, right? You could turbocharge it. That's an option. You could pro-charge it. And when I say pro-charge, I'm talking about the centrifugal um, supercharger. So that could be a pro-charger. That could be a torque storm, um, whatever, dope, any of those variations. Uh, or you could go roots bore, which is, you know, positive displacement type bore. You're talking about your Whipple, uh, you're talking about your Magnuson, or you're talking about maybe thinking about getting the Hellcat uh, blower put onto your 5.7. That is also possible. I personally don't like that route. Um, not that I don't like the outcome. If you do it correctly, the outcome is, is fantastic. It's just as fantastic as if you, you know, went with a Whipple or, um, or Magnuson which are the, you know, the root slash positive displacement blowers that sit on top of the motor. Um, but if you're going to go with the Hellcat blower on a 5.7, you're going to also need to get the uh, adapter kit. I know it's offered by Modern Muscle Extreme MMX. I think the kit runs anywhere from fifteen to twenty five hundred dollars. I haven't checked here recently, but the last time I glanced at it, it was approximately two grand. So if you can get a, a Hellcat blower um, that's in good condition, that's used, I mean, you could probably get one for twenty five hundred, three thousand um, dollars, but you're still going to drop a, another two thousand on the adapter kit, give or take. Um, so now you're at fifty, you know, five thousand, fifty five hundred, and then you still have labor. Um, but then you also have uh, the supporting mods that you need to do as well. You're going to have to get that tuned. Uh, and while some people are fans of email tunes, and you know, if you get the right email tune and you get with a good tuner, a quality tuner. You may not have any issues. I personally prefer dyno tunes. I think that's the best and only way that you can really dial in your car, dial in your build, uh, especially when you're talking about a power adder of that magnitude. You're talking about adding a blower or a, a turbocharge um, application to your vehicle. You know, I just don't believe that a remote tune or email tune is going to get the job done. Can it? Sure. Personal preference. My personal preference is you you put that on a dyno and you let the tuner dial that in. Uh, and shouts out to TAP Performance, T-A-P-P-E-D, Performance out in the McKinney slash Princeton, Texas area. This build is uh, as much their baby as it is mine. Um, shouts out to Rick, he is my tuner out there. Shouts out to Jerry. Um, you can find him, Jerry, on uh, social media at The Hell Wagon. If you've ever seen um, The Hell Wagon, he's the builder and the owner of The Hell Wagon. Uh, I think RT Life has done a couple features on him and that's actually the the tech that puts hands on on venom on this particular car um so check out tap performance those are my guys so you know shouts out to them as well make sure you get with a good tuner make sure you dyno tune that um the tune is is really going to either tie everything together or it's going to ruin what you're trying to build uh that's that's the bottom line and obviously if you have a 2015 and up you're going to have to get the pcm unlocked uh, I believe if you have a 2020 or did it begin at 2021, um, you're not even going to be able to get it unlocked. Like you're going it, to, it's really a hassle. I believe it's 2021 and up where, um, well, it was FCA at that point. They added another security measure to the PCM that made it virtually impossible to unlock. So I don't even think Diablo Sport will unlock it unless they've figured out how to crack that code, that algorithm. Uh, but for the most part, 
2014 and prior i mean it's 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 a free-for-all for you guys you, you can just you know start tuning right off the bat um but with the 2015 and up uh, you're going to have to get that PCM unlocked. So uh, in a separate video, I'll go through the cost of everything and, and what I've paid for the build and what you can expect your expenses to be. Um, but this video is more so just giving you the generality of it, you know, what your options are. So, uh, you know, hey, no C, what, what's the difference? And, and we're going to break it down a little bit because I want those who um, may not understand completely the details of building a car as much as I want to talk to those who know the nuances of it, right? So I'm talking to a, a broad audience here. So let's let's take it down just a notch for those that are newcomers to the game, um, or maybe not newcomers to the game, but don't necessarily know um, the the deets of it, right? So with a turbocharger, your your power is coming by way of your exhaust. The turbo feeds off of your exhaust and then turns that exhaust into power. Obviously, because of that form of, of uh, power adder, you're gonna have what they call turbo lag. The turbo lag is not great, uh, but when that turbo kicks in, you're gonna have more power, typically more power on your high end of your power band. Um, so those who have turbos and prefer turbos understand that they're sacrificing some of their, a lot of their low end power to have more on the top end. Because again, the, the turbos have to spool up and the only way they can spool up is by way of the exhaust that you're pushing through the turbo. So obviously when you get on it, you're pushing more exhaust through the headers, uh, which go through the turbo and it spools up faster and faster and faster and that turbo kicks in and then you feel that punch at about mid range all the way through your top end. Um, me, the reason I didn't choose turbos as beautiful as those setups are, especially on these cars, on the Chargers uh, and the Challengers. The twin turbo is just, it's just beautiful when you look up under there. I'm not a fan of the lag. Uh, I want my power when I want my power. Uh, and that's that's me. I want the instant gratification of it. So that ruled out turbos for me. Um, so that left the either centrifugal uh, blower or the positive displacement blower. Uh, centrifugal blower be it the pro charger or the torque storm those are good examples of uh, of what a centrifugal uh, blower would be you have a slight bit of lag because they also have to spool up but they are not based on your exhaust uh, you mount those in front of your intake those uh, are feeding off of the air that's coming into the intake so you're going to have much 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 less lag it's going to be exponentially less than in a turbo setup but again it's still a turbine that spool that has to spool up. Um, so you're going to be able to get your power much more instantly than with a turbo. You will lose a little bit on the top end, not much, but you're not going to get that turbo kick that you get um, once that turbo spools up well enough to start pushing that power back into the motor. Um, so it's more of a, a, a linear um, graph on a dyno sheet than you would see on a turbo. A turbo is more of a steeper incline. It just, it's slow, 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 pow, and it explodes. Uh, with centrifugal, it's more closer to right when you need it, and then it starts building almost immediately, and then it goes and goes and goes and starts to kind of taper off a little bit on the back end as you approach your red line. Uh, the beauty of the Pro Chargers and the Torque Storms of the world, for me, uh, which almost may be going this direction, even though it has a little bit of lag on it, is that blow off valve uh if you get if you get a nice chunky blow off valve and i know pro charger offers the the uh the beautiful red uh racing blow off valve you know and you've heard it before that is a seductive sound that is provocative that gets the people going and um that was almost the 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 thing that pushed me over to pro charger but you know for me, um, again, I want my power and I want it immediately, but I also like uh, subtlety. So I like things that are subtle but noticeable. So if you look at this build as a whole, um, you'll notice it as it drives by. You'll notice it in the parking lot, but it's, it's not screaming for you to notice it. It's kind of one of those things where it's like if you notice it the way, you know, that I would like you to notice it, then you're like, oh, shit. Right. Same way with my build. So when you pop my hood, I didn't want the intrusiveness 
of the centrifugal supercharger. Um, with those, if you, you know, you can Google it and I'll probably drop a picture in here as well. Typically those setups have the, the blower toward the front of the vehicle driver's side where your OEM uh, air intake would be. Um, you pull out the air intake, you put the blower there, and then it reroutes its own blower, which typically sits on top of your intake, on top of your motor. That's not as clean of a look as I would personally prefer. Uh, I personally prefer the cleaner look of the positive displacement slash the roots blower. So I went with um, that particular setup, and it, I'll show you here shortly. But I like that it's clean, it sits on top, it looks OEM, it looks stock. Um, um, but the power is immediate. There is zero lag, zero, zero, zero lag. And there is a such thing as parasitic loss with those types of blowers, um, but they've gotten you know, exponentially better at being able to design around the science to reduce that um, so that it's so ne so negligible that you don't even notice it at all. I personally don't even notice the parasitic gloss when, you know, it, because it free spins. The, the blowers inside, or I should say the, the, um, the turbines, the rotors inside, they free spin when not in use. So that greatly reduces parasitic gloss. So for me, it was just a no brainer. Um, and based on my setup, I don't really lose that much power as compared to a turbo on the top end. Um, my dyno sheet still looks great. It just climbs, 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 climbs until we let off. Um, and again, it's instant power. It's right there at idle. Before you even press the accelerator, it's ready for you to go. So when you get on it, there is no second guessing. There is no give me a moment. It's where we going, how fast you want to get there. I got you. Just buckle up and turn your ways and radar on because we out of here. Right. So that's what I went for. Um, so that being said, we're going to hop out of the car. I'm going to pop the hood, you know, pull up to pop up. Right. I'm going to pop the hood. We're going to talk about a few things. Um, as far as what I've done personally to make the car um, go far past where Scat Pack is right now. So let's get into that business end of this conversation. Oh, yeah. Kind of cold out here. Temperature dropping again here in Texas. But what can you do, right? 65 this morning. 38 degrees two hours later and there you go Damn! business end of my particular build this is the magnuson supercharger uh, we went with the 2300 so basically 2.3 liters um and for those that don't know about displacement this is a 5.7 block so if you add the 2.3 to it you do your math there you'll see that this is um, pretty healthy displacement there, right? Now, let's start up. Let's start with the intake, the, the cold air intake. Now, the thing about the, the cold air intake is, honestly, this is called a ram. It's a, it's a short air ram. Uh, for those that really know, know the true cold air intake would be like your leg maker that goes all the way down into the fender. That would be all the way down there right and it draws the coldest possible air from the front and underneath the car and then it pulls it up and then into the into the motor um, with this setup the reason i chose this setup instead of a closed box i had a closed box setup um before we supercharged it but once we supercharged it went with the stage two uh, cold air intake from jlt fantastic 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 uh, i combined that open system with the hellcat hood so for me the hellcat hood is absolutely functional it is absolutely functional because this this is just air coming from the outside right this just comes from the outside so this intake can pull air from the top from the grill all right as you can see we we went we changed out the grill right the whole front fascia has been swapped out and from the bottom of the vehicle which will be down there because if you take your air intake out you'll notice it has the, the, the drill out that leads down 
So we're getting maximum airflow from this stage two kit from JLT. So this JLT leads into the throttle body. My throttle body, I believe the throttle body OEM on five sevens were 80 or 80 millimeters. That's not gonna cut it. That's not gonna fucking cut it. I went with a 90 millimeter ported throttle body from BBK. Um, I've had, knock on wood, no issues whatsoever. It's been a fantastic uh, throttle body for me. It inhales like a pissed off dragon, I assure you. So when you combine this 90 millimeter throttle body with the stage two JLT that's pulling air from every possible way, we're talking about a shit ton more airflow before you even get to the blower. So we're feeding gobs and gobs more air to a blower setup that in and of itself is designed to give you that power. We did a couple other things as well. We went with the 185 degree thermostat. Um, and of course, kind of a side note to everybody. Once you start building, try to do it in phases if you can when you talk about major things. So for example, you could change out the air intake uh, and you don't need a tune for your air intake. However, the rule of thumb is a tune should make everything better. It should maximize the efficiency and the power of everything that you're trying to maximize. So if you get a cold air intake and you don't get a tune, you're not really going to see any gains. You'll get the sound that you want depending upon your setup and what cold air intake you go with, but you're not going to really see the gains you would if you got the cold air intake and the tune. So keep that in mind. Now, when you tie in your cold air intake, get a quality cold air intake, um, I would suggest going with a larger throttle body. Uh, we even considered going with a 105 millimeter ported Demon throttle body. Um, and when I say considered, I mean we were about to order it, but the back order was just unbelievable. Um, so kind of a spoiler, that might be coming in the future. I still have the adapter for it. Um, so when we start changing out the pulley and everything, the pulley being this pretty little girl right here, um, then we'll start doing, we'll start looking at swapping out. But that 90 millimeter throttle body is just absolutely fantastic. Um, so 180 degree thermostat. Oh, the sidebar was whenever you're having things put together, uh, replace whatever you need to replace. So for example, that's a brand new water pump. There is no reason to not get your water pump swapped out if you're getting uh, this kind of work done. I mean, you just want to throw as much as possible at the builder, at the shop um, to reduce your overall labor cost. Because if you have to keep going back to get this done and then, oh, I, I should have gotten that done, so I'll go back and get this done, that adds up to be much more expensive than if you just get it done um, all at one time or as much at one time as possible, right? So here's the Magnuson. We converted this to a flex vehicle. As you can see, we went with the ProFlex Commander. I'll come around so you can, there you go. So we went with the ProFlex Commander. Uh, not a cheap go, but most certainly worth it. Uh, now we can run E85. I don't typically like to run E85 in the winter. Uh, when it's in the chambers, it's harder to ignite. So the, the ignition point, that's what I'm looking for. The ignition point on E85 is gonna be much higher. It, it takes the spark plugs that much more effort to get it to spark, to get it to jump. Now that's not a big deal in the spring and the summer, especially when you're talking about um, Texas, right? Because Texas is hot. I mean, E85 in the spring and summer, it fires right up, no, no problem. In the winter months though, it's a bit of a rough cold start. You have to try two and three times sometimes to get the car to jump off. Uh, and I just, I don't like that for my motor. So in the winter I run 93, which is what I'm running right now. Um, but in the uh, in the spring, which is coming up here soon, and I can't wait, I'll get back to E85. Now keep in mind, um, if you want to jump into E85, it's going to give you more power, absolutely, especially if you have a build of this magnitude and you're dyno tuned and everything. Um, but it's also going to drink a hell of a lot more fuel. It, it burns cleaner, so it burns faster, right? So there's a trade-off to E85, but the power is most certainly there. So we have it converted to a flex fuel vehicle, but in order to do that, you're also going to need to upgrade the supporting mod. So this is what I was talking about in the intro, supporting mod, supporting mod, supporting mod. Anybody can just throw a blower on. 
and then you're going to blow up your car because you have to be able to support the new power. So the E85 is the perfect example of that. This blower, this setup for Magnuson came with Hellcat injectors. Those injectors are 600 cc injectors. Um, that that's not going to be sufficient for E85. Nor was the OEM fuel pump that came with the 5.7. That wasn't going to cut it either. Or even a small upgrade on the fuel pump wasn't going to cut it. So what we did was we went with the uh, four fuel pump. F-O-R-E, uh, and we pulled out the 600 cc Hellcat injectors and we went with uh, fuel injector clinic, the FIC 1000 uh, cc. So we run a thousand cc injectors, which is more than enough to run the 85. Those are bigger injectors with the four fuel pump, making sure we're doing it right. We stuck with the OEM coil packs. I've been seeing a lot of people ask about the coil packs on uh, in Facebook groups and things like that. Um, for my money, there's nothing better than the OEM. Uh, Mopar absolutely nailed it with the OEM coil packs. I hear so many, you know, nightmare stories about people who went and upgraded their coil packs or they thought they were upgrading their coil packs and they paid money for, you know, the pretty red ones and things like that. And they're just shit. They're just shit. So when it comes to your coil packs, no matter what your power output is, the OEM ones for me are best. Uh, if you have a, a story of your aftermarket coil packs being better by all means drop it in the comments i would love to have the conversation with you um just real real you know realistically speaking because i want to see what you're running uh what your build is and, and kind of get an idea of why it worked for you but not necessarily for a lot of other people oil catch can this is not a power adder however if you have a hemi you have to get an oil catch can if you want to extend the life of your motor it is non-negotiable if you want to extend the life of your motor uh, but i have videos or at least one video and a short on that. So make sure you browse, because if you browse the page, you'll see how it works, what it does, and why it's why it's magnificent. Um, so this is the stock. When I say stock, I mean stock from Magnuson. This is the stock pulley. This is a 3.40 inch. Um, we will go smaller here shortly. But again, I need to um, become re I needed to become reacclimated to the car as it sits, because when you do a build like this, the car is not the car that you bought anymore. You. I felt like I was on a spaceship, and uh, I'm not sure what to do with my hands. You need to learn how to drive that car all over again, learn its nuances, dial it in, and then you take the next step, right? That's just how you should do it. It's just smart to do that. Um, this is going to be your heat exchanger cooler, heat exchanger down there that comes with any supercharged application. Let's see if I can get a better. There you go. Peekaboo. Right? And we're actually going to make this scoop functional. So what we're going to do is run that tube um, into that JLT, cut that hole out so it's closer to what the Hellcat lower air inbox has, where it has that tube that comes through that, so we can get even more air because this is a this is an opportunity for more air that I'm not taking advantage of just yet. But you have to start thinking about things like that. What are your choke points what are your encumbrances to more power and how can you resolve those and that's a good example of one that i'm going to get taken care of um, so 185 degree thermostat when you get a 185 degree thermostat or a 180 degree thermostat or a 190 degree thermostat you're going to need to tune you could run it without the tune um, but you're not truly getting what you paid for because it'll hold, let's say you have a 185 degree thermostat, right? It'll hold at 185, you know, give or take, when you're driving, when the car is in motion and it's getting that air fed through, you know, the front grill. But when you're sitting at idle, when you're in traffic or, or the like, um, your fans aren't tuned to kick on at 185. Your fans are still tuned to kick on at 200, 205, 210. So you're only getting half of what you pay for. So a tune is in order when you get that 185 degree thermostat. Perfect example. Now, so we talked about the intake portion of it. All of this is the intake portion of it, right? Intake, intaking, intaking air. How much are you intaking? Where is it coming from, right? Into the blower inside here 
you have your two spinning roots that then jam all of this air into your heads, into your motor. That's where that extra power comes from, but you have to have the fueling to match it, which goes back to me upgrading the fuel pump to a four F-O-R-E fuel pump and the bigger injectors that can run E85, but can also go back to 93 if I need. You have to have this tuned appropriately because too much air, not enough fuel equals you running lean. If you run lean, you risk explosion right you literally risk blowing up your motor it's called grenading your motor you do not want to run lean nor do you want to run too rich but i'd rather run slightly rich than, than slightly lean or all the way lean so when you're getting you know all of this work done and you want all this power and it's like yeah i'm going to supercharge it i'm going to get me a pro charger which would sit right here or a torque storm which would sit right here and then the blower would be oh, excuse me the air intake would be right here or I want to get the Magnuson, or I want to get the Whipple, and I'm just going to, you know, jam all this air. Yeah, that's fantastic. The question is, what's your fueling situation? Because on a 5.7, your OEM fuel pump is not going to be able to keep up with the power demand uh, that you're giving it because the, the fuel has to match the air. That's how you get the ignition. That's how you get the explosion inside of your chambers that drives the car in the first place. It's what it's fuel plus air plus spark equals boom. That's what's happening in your chambers. Ideally, if your fuel is, um, far insufficient or insufficient at all now you're jamming more air than fuel now we're talking air to fuel ratio atf that's a key thing that you need to learn and understand if you don't already now your air to fuel ratio is is too much air not enough fuel inside the chamber which is going to make for a bigger spark or bigger uh yeah bigger spark and you're thinking okay well that's that's good yeah, it's not good, <laughs> right? Because uh, again, you get the mushroom effect and now, pow, 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 good night motor. So when you're doing these air intake upgrades and then you add the blower, the bigger throttle body, et cetera, et cetera. And I know a few of these terms I'm just screwing up because you know, it tired mind, but I love y'all anyway. Um, make sure that you upgrade your fuel as well. You have to have your fuel. So now, Let's get back to the to the motor, but let's talk about the back end, right? So think about your, your car as, as your body. You eat, and then you go to the bathroom and it comes out. You breathe, and then you exhale, right? So you inhale, and then you exhale. This is all inhale, 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 inhale. What about your exhale, no see? What about your exhale? Well, let's talk about your exhale. Let's talk about my exhale on this car. You want to reduce the choking points. That is key. You want this as free flowing as possible. That is key. The five seven comes with a two and a half inch exhaust. Trash, trash. Rip it off. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Um, what we're running on this. Let's see if I can get a good angle on it might not be able to we'll give it a shot though see there's a glimpse of it and you see it kind of peaking i give you better let's do it this way i'm getting on the ground for y'all oh yeah you see that peekaboo peekaboo we're running stainless works long tube headers um with a two inch inlet so they come in the 1.7 inch inlet and the two inch inlet and we're running the two inch uh, inlet uh, on the stainless works long tube headers. And I went back and forth on if I wanted to delete my cats or if I did not, I chose to keep my cats um, simply to reduce the odor because those who delete their cats, they won't tell you about the odor. I already know about the odor because you know, I've been building cars for a long time and um, I know that well from the 89 uh, Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS I sold a year, year and a half ago. Uh, com obviously completely catless and that exhaust plume is something else. Uh, that is something else. <laughs> so um, if you're gonna daily the car, you probably don't wanna deal with that level 
of, of older uh, on a regular basis. So something to keep in mind there. But uh, So I didn't delete the cats, but I did go with the Stainless Works High Flow Cats for the mids. Um, and then from the cat back, so now we're talking about cat back exhaust. So for those that don't know, that's what cat back exhaust means. It means from catalytic converters backward, okay? So for my cat back exhaust, uh, we stripped off that 2.5 inch garbage because again, it creates a choke point, right? So you have, you're jamming all this air into the motor, so it's inhaling all this air, it's inhaling all this air. Taste the air, taste the air, taste the air. Yeah, it tastes good. It's inhaling all this air, but it has to that all of that air has to exit in equal volume, ideally, right? So if you're gonna take in all this but push it through two and a half inch pipes, it's you're you're robbing yourself of some serious power and more importantly, some serious torque. So that's really um the benefit of going long tubes. Could you go short tubes? Yes, you could. Uh turbo applications tend to go short tubes. Um on the headers and I've had short tubes on here before, but again, when I went to do the full supercharger setup, we went long tubes. I wanted as much uh, scavenging effect in my exhaust as possible, which helps the scavenging effect helps um, in each one of the tubes on the headers. It helps create a negative space behind the exiting exhaust, which then pulls out, like it literally sucks extra exhaust out of the motor, um, gives you more torque uh, makes the motor more efficient, gives you more power. It's just a beautiful thing. Um, so from the cat back, we are running three inch. Then I'll drop the video in this segment here while I'm talking. We're running three inch cat back. Um, I did a little bit of a custom job. So we have for the mids, two Dynamax racing bullets for the mids. Uh, we have a three inch aftermarket X pipe. I wanted to keep my X pipe because I wanted to keep some back pressure. You don't want to completely lose all of your back pressure because now you're working against yourself. Uh, some back pressure being existent in the system helps with the torque, helps with the power. Uh, you could straight pipe it, but if you straight pipe it, you're losing all of your back pressure. So I wanted to keep some of the back pressure, but again, that's still a three inch X pipe. Uh, and that goes into some more three inch piping, which dumps into the rears, which are two Flowmaster Outlaws, right? That setup for me is fantastic. Um, no knock to anyone who chooses a straight pipe, but I cannot get enough of the sound of the stainless work long tube headers going through high flow cat at mids through Dynamax racing bullets through um, two Flowmaster Outlaws Outback. Fantastic. I uh, actually just downloaded the Decibel um, app on the phone, started playing with it a little bit yesterday. I'm not gonna give you guys any spoilers because I'm having so much fun with it that I gotta make it an another video. So stay tuned for that. Um, but it's aggressive, it's loud, but it's loud without the rasp. It's loud with a lot of throat right that's what she said so that's going to be my exit so when you're talking about a fantastic intake a much bigger throttle body this is 10 millimeters bigger and ported than the original throttle body with a supercharger now you have your air where's my fuel we're running a proflex commander so we're e85 in the spring and summer sometimes in the fall but in the winter we go to 93 we're on 1000 cc injectors from fic fuel injector clinic uh, we're on the four i believe it's a 4392 fuel pump out back so that we can match the fuel with the new the new gobs of air that we're jamming into it right for some added cleanup for the uh for the heads and the, you know the, the cylinders jlt intake right to keep it running as cool as possible 185 degree thermostat and it's tuned for that also um and as it sits and there's some other goodies that i'm not exactly going to go into yeah got to keep some things close to the vest uh, as it sits with this current setup on seven pounds we're at 600 to the wheel around 600 in torque now if you know anything about the scat pack uh that if it's stock it's 485 to the crank 
if you take 14 to 18% um, differential loss, which is the power loss from the crank to the wheels, uh, they're anywhere from 390 to 415, depending on how conservative or liberal you want to be in the calculation. All right, so let, let's be liberal. Let's let's give the scat pack uh, 415 to the wheels. It's probably a little bit less, but let's just give them the 415. On seven pounds, this current setup, without me adding anything else, is around 600 to the wheels. Jesus Christ. Also around 605 or so in torque to the wheels. We turned it down just a little bit. We're well, going on the conservative side because this is a stock block, which is your next question. No C, what have you done to the internals to be able to support that power? At the moment, nothing. You know why? Because the 5.7 is bulletproof. It is the godfather motor. That's why you should not pay attention to people telling you the 5.7 isn't good enough or it isn't this or it isn't that this is the godfather motor this is the motor that dodge has put the most research into this is the motor that's going into the most vehicles for dodge this is it so they have built it and reinforced it to be able to handle whatever you throw at it within reason so the safe thing to do would be to keep this at around six to seven pounds of boost. You could be a little more liberal, go seven and a half, maybe even eight if you're feeling froggy that day. But I, this is my baby, so I don't want to feel that froggy. Uh, especially when on seven pounds you could get with this setup. Everybody's setup is different. So for example, if you get short tubes instead of long tubes, if you keep your factory uh, catalytic converters instead of going you know, high flows or deleting your cats all together. And did you keep your two and a half inch OEM piping in your exhaust? Or did you go to seven five or did you go to the three inch? All of this matters. What's your cold air intake situation? All of this matters as far as what numbers you're gonna be able to put down or not put down. Are you running E85 or are you not running E85, right? So forth and so on. Uh, but you turn it down a little bit because I do want to, uh, get into this motor and and upgrade some things i want to upgrade the heads i want to you know change out the because the mds is deleted on this we don't run four cylinders on this obviously had that deleted when we did the dyno tune so there is no eagle mode on this. there is no four cylinder mode. it's eight cylinders 100 percent of the time but the mds lifters are still in there and that makes me nervous because anybody who knows about him and knows about those MDX lifters, they can eventually give you a, a freaking headache. Um, so that's, that's going to get upgraded. But I want to harken back to what I said earlier. Try to get as much done as possible because we also want to get this cammed. Um, I didn't get this cammed when it was naturally aspirated because I was unsure if I was going to keep it naturally aspirated or if I was going to cam it. Now that I've decided that I want to cam it, or I should say now that I've decided that I want to boost it, now we're gonna go ahead and get a cam. You wanna try to make the cam as specific to your build as possible. Naturally aspirated camshafts um, will work on boosted applications, but you're not getting everything you paid for. So we're gonna get a custom grind for a, a cam that's designed for boost um, and when we're in there doing that that's when we're going to upgrade things like the heads and and the push rods and the mds lifters pull that out put some hellcat lifters in there so forth and so on that's going to be all the motor work that we get done that's going to come in a couple months or so but it's not needed that's my thing it's not needed at the moment because the 57 is so robust and it's so virtually bulletproof within reason that you could run six to seven and a half and eight pounds of boost safely as long as you haven't beat the, the motor to high hell before you started boosting it that comes into play as well how well did you take care of your motor or did you shit all over you know were your oil changes regular or not do you slide every single day or do you not um are you punching it from every stop sign or are you not there's a difference between having fun with your, your vehicle and this isn't shade anybody i mean it's your car do what the hell you want to do this is simply talking objectively uh, all of this matters the health of the motor matters before you drop something like this onto it. 
right? Um, this is my baby. I, I have my fun with her. I get on her. Um, trust me, <laughs> I've had to hurt some feelings and we'll continue to do so as necessary. Uh, but all the paperwork on this vehicle, man. I, I get oil changes, you know, every 2,500 miles or so, full synthetic, um, you know, I mean, everything, you know, from the tune-up, we're always done on time. Everything about this car is baby. That's why the motor was so healthy and ready um, for it. Now, with the 5.7, I'm telling you, you put six, seven pounds of boost on it and it starts craving more. It gets it gets so fun that it's dangerous. It starts craving more. That's what I mean when I was speaking about my dyno curve, right? It, the power is instant with that Magnuson or Whipple if you have it, zero lag whatsoever. Uh, and it just absolutely starts climbing and it keeps climbing, it keeps climbing until you let off. So, um, so again, this is a good, uh, a good, I should say, video chat for lack of a better way to put it with you guys to show you that yes you absolutely can build the five seven up um to beat the scat pack um so a stock scat pack being liberal with it puts down 415 to the wheel a little bit less at this current situation at seven pounds before we even really start turning it up roughly 600 to the wheel 600 and torque um, but right now it's turned down a little bit, so it's six pounds of boost, and it's a little over 500 to the wheel. Uh, I think I want to say like 515 in torque, maybe 520 in torque. Still very torquey, still very fast. Um, so I mean, you do the you do the math because the math is mathing, right? 500 is way more than 415. Um, so this this will walk a 392 um, like a puppy at a dog park. Now, the Hellcats, we, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We'd have to go up a little in the boost, and we could on this stock block. I'm just not necessarily comfortable doing so. So could I run with a Hellcat right now? Um, sure, if I go ahead with the smaller pulley and we make some adjustments to the tune, so forth and so on. But I don't want to do that at the risk of grenading my engine, right? Everything in moderation. You have to have patience with it. Um, so when we get to the next phase of the build, we will absolutely put down numbers that won't just equal the Hellcat. It will be more than the Hellcat. But as it stands, I'm keeping up with the Hellcat. They'll they'll get away on the top end a little bit. Um, but, you know, there I, I have plenty of friends with Hellcats who can attest. Uh, you know, one called my 345 a bully because they kept trying to get away from me and they couldn't get away from it. So that was definitely fun. Um, but this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You do it the right way the car will be reliable again i daily this i have more than one car but i daily this i drive this car virtually every single day no issues knock on wood um i get check engine lights from the long tube headers um but you know if you know anything about the emissions laws and everything yeah. <laughs> the pcm and you know even when you dyno tune you're just going to have to keep chasing that rabbit when it comes to emissions because it just hates the long tubes. So it, it throws codes every once in a while, but the only codes that it throws are all emission related. I got a FedEx truck I'm trying to, do, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Caught that on tape. <laughs> if y'all want to know why, why FedEx is always late, it's because they running in trees. So, but yeah, I mean, this is doable. Uh, and this is, we're just getting started on this. Just getting started. So turn down. It's 500 or so to the wheel, around 515, 525 in torque, just absolute torque beast. Uh, and peak torque, and this hits at around, I wanna say 4200, I have to go back and look at my dyno sheet. Anywhere between 3800 to 4200 is when the peak torque kicks in and it just starts hitting from there. Um, so yeah, that's basically where we at with it. Now, one thing I wanna make sure I make clear to you guys is we didn't talk about it uh, until now, as you can see, this is a the rear end swap. We're coming out of five inch tips, cannons, right? Look at that, whole fist, whole fist, piece of the arm. That's what she said. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, but you gotta make sure you put, you're able to put the power to the ground, right? So in doing so, first of all, upgrade your tires. 345s, 
57 RT, whatever you want to call it. They come with some shitty 245s all, all around on all four corners. First thing I did was move to 275. And my next step is to go to a 295, maybe even a 305 on the back and a 295 up front. I haven't decided if I want to stagger it yet, but you got to come off those 245s. You're not going to be able to get the power down. The 245s have a difficult enough time getting the power down from a stock uh, 57. And the stock 57s are to the wheel in the low 300s. So if you're talking about adding more power to it, those aren't going to do it whatsoever. Even the two, 275s, which is why I got to go to 295 or better, even the 275s are starting to struggle. Um, now I say starting to struggle, I mean they're really struggling. So make sure you get the right tire size. You got to get some meat back there to get the power down. Huge thing for the 57 is what I'm about to show you. The pumpkin. Right, we call it the pumpkin. That is your rear diff. I'm actually gonna take this off the stand so we can get a better angle. That's your rear diff, or that's my rear diff. If you have a stock 5.7, your rear diff does not look like that. Not with the cooling fins. You have, I wanna say a 2.62, 2.62 gearing, um, which is an open gearing. It is not limited slip. I have a limited slip. This is a 3.09 limited slip differential rear differential swap okay what this does is it allows me to get the power down to both wheels equally it senses which wheel is losing grip losing power and it begins transferring some additional power to the wheel to always try to make sure that both wheels are equally powered at all times if you have a factory rear diff or factory pumpkin the 262 i want to say uh it's it's open it's not a limited slip so that's why it's so difficult to get two wheel burnouts in your 57 it's because your oem rear diff does not distribute power between the two it just allows one wheel if one wheel is getting all the power and that's the one that's losing you know traction or whatever the case may be you're going to get one wheel peels one wheel burnouts um, and for those that do like slide and do like doing donuts, it's doable and with that original diff, but good luck because it's not easy. Um, but for those who are looking to, you know, go off the line quick, uh, get better zero to sixties, better quarter mile times, um, you know, this is what you want to do. Now, now, talking rear diff, um, obviously, like I was saying, you have more than one option. I mean, you could get taller gearing. 3.9 something like that but you have to make it specific to what your goal is and that's my chest mount that's what i was using earlier so uh, you know all my superhero stuff for you guys um you want to make sure that you you ask yourself hold on one second we got another truck people trying to get their bag i'm not mad at them i'm not mad you have to ask yourself before you start building out your car any car doesn't matter what it is doesn't matter what it is ask yourself what's your end game if you don't know what your end game is you're going to waste a whole lot of money you're going to piss away a lot of money because you keep hopping around are you building a car that you want to be a beast but also to be a daily driver you can do it hello right are you building one that you just want to be a road a road course car track car dragger okay build it to that okay um but i say that to say you know with the taller gearing it's a little less pleasant at highway speed 3.09 is a fantastic balance of being able to get all my power down um but at speed you know 80 85 90 miles an hour from cruising on the highway uh it's still very pleasant uh you start to lose some of that pleasantry when you go to the taller gears and the rear diff so keep in mind you have to be able to get the power down you got to get the power down you got to get the power down so you're doing everything that you can to you know get as much air because more air means more power so you get all this th this gobs of air pushed into the to the motor and then you do it right by upgrading your fuel system and now you're matching the fuel to the fueling to the to the air so your air to fuel ratio looks fantastic you're doing it all the right way you're wonderful now you're, you're also exhaling the right way be it shorties or long tubes be it high flow cat at mids or um no cats right and then you say hey let's take a look at the the cat back 
two and a half inches, no way, get it out of here. Two and three quarters, no way, get it out of here. Three inches. I know some guys that run three and a halves. I've actually considered that and might do it. Um, the Dynamax Racing Bullets, for me also, it's a straight through, right? It's not an offset, it's a straight through. My Flowmaster Outlaws, it's a straight through. You can literally hold it up and look straight through. I have a very free flowing system with very little interference for that exhaust. I mean, it flows straight from the motor right on out the back there is no choke point whatsoever there is no redirect that some offers will have the inlet offset from the outlet there's none of that so you're doing all of this and you're like yeah i got the i got the power i'm 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 faster than the scat i'm you know ready to start building to, to catch the hellcat but you can't get the power down because you didn't change all your rear diff you still have an open rear diff all of that power to one wheel you're not going anywhere right or you changed out the rear diff you upgraded because the 309 that's what comes on the scats that's what comes on some of the hellcats um most of the hellcats and you upgrade the rear diff but your tires are still 245s so now yeah you're getting the power down to both rear wheels equally but you're just standing there spinning in place which is fun if that's your goal and you just want to sit there and burn out for the you know for 15 minutes uh, but if your goal is to take the guy next to you and, and hurt his feelings, teach him a lesson, he's already long gone and you still sitting there in a cloud of smoke. Upgrade your tires. 245s are trash. They should have never put them on these cars at all. Any car. Any car from uh, built by Mopar unless you're talking about like a Dodge Dart. Shouts out to the Darts as well. Um, that's not shade to the Darts. I, you know, I got some people that drive darts and they're building those up and you'd be surprised what those darts can do um you know trying to make them into the neon srt4 and if you know about that beast yeah all right so you know all in all can it be done yes it can be done and i know what you're thinking right now the cost but so we'll i'll itemize the cost for you in another video but generally speaking because i know that question is floating in your head it's cost versus market. So I paid low 20, so that's around 23,000 for this car, right? So I paid outright 23,000 for this car two and a half years ago when the market was <laughs> very much in my favor. It is not in anybody's favor right now. So 23,000 for a completely stock RT that only had around 30,000 miles on it and I'm only the second owner. It was taken care of very, very well um now you look at supercharger setup you look at the long tube headers the the exhaust you look at the labor converting to a flex vehicle etc cetera, etc cetera. we're we're over 10 grand in mods on this car and again i haven't told you everything i've done to it nor will i because some things just need to remain a secret um but yeah i'm over 10 grand into this car i'll even go liberally speaking let's say 12 plus on this car okay well 23 plus 12 that's 35 right 35,000 give or take it's rough estimates because I'd have to sit down and itemize and I have to uh, do it <laughs> when I'm in the mood to to know what that number is but let's say it's around 35,000 total as it sits all right, 35,000 total as it sits. I want you to tell me where you can get a vehicle that's capable of 600 to the wheel horsepower, 600 plus pound feet of torque to the wheel. All right, keep in mind, we got it turned down a bit, so it's, in, it's still in the fives um, in both horsepower and torque. In 2022, for $35,000. It's not going to happen. Now, I'll, let, let's let's add something else to it. So not only is, are you not going to find a car with that kind of power, let's talk about how the car is spent. This isn't a base model, RT. This car was spec'd to the letter, okay? Heated and ventilated, Napa leather, seats with the bolsters, right? Telescopic steering wheel and uh electronic pedals right y'all see the gauges y'all know 
are all about that business, right? 8.4 inch Uconnect screen and the roof, right? We got the sunroof jumping off, you already know. So like I said, this is not a base model. So we're, we're basically, I'm asking you, where can you get a vehicle? I'm not even gonna say the uh, a trim. I'm not gonna assign a trim to it. I'm just gonna ask you, where can you get a vehicle that can give you 600 pound feet of torque plus 600 horsepower to the wheel when you turn it up just a smidge? But even if you turn it down, 500s, <laughs> you're in the 500s. That's completely decked out from a spec standpoint, right? Including the 10 speaker system. 35k nope because if you go looking right now for a scat pack completely stripped cloth no no excuse me no real uh creature comforts that's a 485 to the crank around 412 to 415 to the wheel today's market depending on mileage you're at around 45 50 grand that's that's the scat that's not the Hellcat, that's the Scat. You already know Hellcats right now are going for anywhere from 75,000 and up. The math speaks for itself. So if you're asking me why I did this instead of going and getting into the Scat, I'm faster than the Scat for $15,000 less with way more creature comforts, way more luxuries. That's reason number one. Reason number two, my insurance is lower. Because from an insurance standpoint, this is still an RT. It's not a 392. It's not a Hellcat. It's faster, much faster than a 392. But they don't know that, nor do they care. <laughs> right? Soon it will be up there and faster, literally faster than the Hellcat. Soon enough, maybe by this time next year. But my insurance company still views it as an RT. So I get charged that particular rate and then on top of that it's the oh shit factor you cannot put a price on the oh shit factor right when somebody sees it's an rt and they think it's a game and they're gonna gap you and they're gonna walk you and then they end up getting their ass handed to them the look on their face you can't put a price on that when you pull up to a car meet or a car show and you pop the hood and you see the faces on those who realize it's a 345 with a supercharger sitting on top of it, you can't put a price on that. So for me, I had all the reason in the world to go the route I went and I am having a blast and you can have a blast too. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. Just go ahead and do it. Go ahead and get it done and then they will end up eating their words both before you put your foot to the accelerator and after you put your foot to the accelerator. And that's the bottom line, because no C said so. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it for this video. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I feel like I might've missed over a couple of the points that I probably wanted to talk about that when I start editing this video, I'll be like, Damn, I forgot to say this and this, but that's what future videos are for. So. Um, which is a perfect segue for what I'm about to say. Subscribe. Uh, if you like what you're seeing in this video, browse the other videos um, and turn on your notifications. Like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications and make sure you browse. And if this is something that uh, you're having fun with, like I'm having fun with it, if you have a 5.7 and you want to keep up with this build and you want tips and tricks on what you should do with yours, uh, keep in mind, you know, this isn't just going to be me putting out the videos to help you. Uh, I'm also going to have live stream sessions where we have conversations. You'll be able to ask live, you know, questions and get them answered in real time. So we're looking to build the channel out to be that. Make sure you follow on IG. We are Venom, W-E, the letter R, Venom 345, same as the YouTube. Same as on TikTok. We are Venom 345. Make sure you follow on TikTok. Um, tons more to come tons more we are just getting started on this car this car is only in phase two of a five phase build it's only phase two <laughs> so when i tell you not only am i holding some things close to my uh vest as far as 
what's done to the car already that I didn't mention in this video. We have a list of other things that we're going to get done to it. Um, building is fun. Uh, building is satisfying. It's gratifying. It's validating to be able to put together a plan, execute it, see the the fruits of your labor thereafter. It's uh, there's nothing like it. Um, so if you're it's, it's built versus bought, built versus bought. Uh, if you're a person that's on the bought spectrum of it, that's cool. You know, no shade for me. Go for it. You know, uh, whatever floats your boat or finds your lost remote. Um, but I personally am on the built side of it. I've had several project cars in my life and I've, you know, I just have so much fun building them out and, and seeing things come to uh, fruition over time and then being able to sit back and look at it and say, oh, I did that. I did that. That didn't come from the factory like that. I did that. Um, and again, the ooh and ah factor, uh, you can't put a price on that. Um, but again, with this build, even if you put a price on it, I still came out on top. I'm still coming out on top. And I'm already way past a stock scat pack. Um, scat pack would have to boost to be able to match me on lower boost. So they have to boost to match me on lower boost as far as power is concerned. And then all I have to do is add another, you know, one or two pounds and then they're in the rear view again. Right? That's how this build is set up. The five seven is the godfather. Don't let anybody tell you different. Right? You can do it. I'm doing it. So hop in the comments, like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications so you don't miss a video. Uh, and we out here. I'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah.